What happens when you're not centered? At any time, at any time you're out of center, you're more likely to make poor choices. We've talked about physical accidents and negative manifestations. Centering is basically a form of release. Releasing the hold experiences have on our consciousness and energy. The key to centering is awareness and understanding of your experiences. Because if you have an understanding of your experiences, then you're not being pulled into emotional state. You're not being pulled into anxiety or anything else. And so it's much easier to stay centered. If people that try to stay centered, stay centered and don't understand this concept, it's very difficult. Because their fears are going to pull them out of center. Their anxiety is going to pull them out of center. Control drama is going to pull them out of center. Okay, everything can, all these things can pull you out of center. One way to recognize when you're out of center is when you feel like that energy going out. And there are a lot of ways uh, that that can happen. Some people, you know, feel drained. Okay, well, if, you've, if you got drained by something, then you, were, you weren't centered. Because if you're centered and hanging, and, and hanging out in this area here, you're pulling the energy in through your d divine source, and you have all that you need to expend. Now, sure, there's times when you need recuperation. You need, you need to, you know, re rejuvenate. Um, but the point is, you, will, you can feel the energy going out of you, oftentimes in a control drama, um, in an argument. When you have fear, you can feel the energy going out. Take, for instance, uh, that, uh, the moment where you almost get in a car accident and you hit the brakes. Okay? Everybody's felt that energy go poof, right out of their head, right? <laughs> it's no surprise. I, I mean, that's a real physical effect. Uh, some, some of them are more subtle, but certainly you can feel it. Okay, heartbeat. Obviously, if, you, if your heart's beating fast, you're most likely not very centered because you're not in a calm state. Emotional pain and panic, uh, breathing, basically any time that you do not feel calm and at peace. Okay, when you feel that energy go out, okay, and that, that'll be the easiest time to focus on centering if you haven't really experienced it before, feel it draw back in. Okay, consciously go and feel that energy pull back in. And if you do that enough times in exercise, you will get used to it, okay? If you feel, again, you're in a control drama, you know you're in a control drama, the thing is to pull that energy back in because you know that the energy's out here when you're, when you're having a control drama. You know, you got all this stuff you were going to say and all this intent of what you're going to do, and you just got to release it and let that energy come back in. And that's where you're going to break the control drama, okay? If they don't feel that energy floating around your head and around your aura that they can just sap up, and again, they're going to uh, find that it doesn't work for them. They're not uh, getting out of it what they wanted. Okay, meditation is simply a more focused and higher level of centering. Self-hypnosis. Yeah, meditation is nothing more than a form of self-hypnosis. So moments of peace, uh, in other words, moments of centering, are moments that keep you over here. So the option is, you know, you can meditate once a day, uh, for one hour a day or something, if that works for you. If you're not used to maintaining a centered state, that's at least something to bring you back uh, from the anxieties of the day. Or, you know, eventually, when you, stay, when you master this side of the, the, the chart, uh, you learn that you can stay centered 24 hours a day. Well, guess what? And you think that's more helpful than one hour a day? Yeah. And that is the true... Uh, perf perfection of a meditative state. It's, you may not be as deep in a meditation, but if you can say partially meditative state for 24 hours a day, it's much more uh, powerful on your positive manifestation than if you can only do it one hour a day. Okay? So you may, you may not be able to maintain as high a level, but the continuous state is much better. Starting point. Visualizing yourself in a peaceful environment focus on uh, focus to shut out clutter. Okay, for if people that haven't meditated before, um, the ideal situation is to clear your mind and let the information come in that you're supposed to receive. I mean, that's the ideal state of meditation. However, for a lot of people, that's not readily achievable on your first attempt. Um, one of the biggest challenges that people have is that they're trying to re eliminate the clutter from the day. Okay, or the clutter from their consciousness or the clutter from their past traumas and all this stuff that they're carrying around with them all the time. So to settle your mind, if you can't do it immediately, one way is to actually visualize on something, focus on something. And that can be, uh, you want to pick like a peaceful environment. And you know, the most common, and everybody's probably heard this, uh, you know, visualize a bench, you know, on a, on a walkway. 
and visualize that you're sitting on that bench and visualize flowers or a lake or a stream out in front of you. And the more you can visualize, you'll find that it close, you know, it shuts off all that garbage that you're, that's running through your mind and it actually can be very, very peaceful. You're still maybe working more than in a meditation than uh, would be ideal, but still, it's a way of turning off the noise. Okay, and that's one of the biggest reasons that people don't meditate. They say, oh, I can't sit for five minutes, I can't turn off the noise. So you can actually just focus on something that's peaceful and, and maintain the focus. Okay, and eventually you'll find that you'll be able to maintain a, a peaceful state, and then you can go to the next level, which is to clear the slate, not think of anything, and let information come in, which you can have some pretty uh, divine and inspiring uh, information come in if you are able to do that. Music can be used to help you uh, from falling asleep. Again, uh, a lot of people say, well, meditation, you know, I, I lay there and I, and I start to doze off. Okay, well, then use some music. Nothing wrong with that. Again, we're, we're, you're learning how to reach a le higher level of meditation. You don't have to be there in the first attempt. So, uh, music, again, uh, something that's soothing. A lot of spiritual music out there that's very good for meditation. And, and uh, they will help you keep from falling asleep and help you keep focused. Music can be loud enough to be, feel the vibration. I actually use, have used chakra music. Uh, which I've used to help meditate as well as help physical healing. And I play that loud enough so I can actually feel the vibration. It's more powerful that way. Okay, and I can still meditate, but, you know, some people might not be able to. Okay, dreams and visions. Dreams usually uh, during your deep sleep, a REM state, which most people are know about. Uh, dreams are provided to teach us while we sleep. We talked about that. I've told you some of my dreams. Um, so you can take, uh, you know, take advantage of that if you have a dream. Again, I would say wake up right away if you, if you can't figure it out while you're in the dream. Then wake up, write it down, because it is important. Doesn't mean you'll understand it immediately, but it's, it's, it's important that you recognize it. They show us where we're blocked or stuck and, and on obstacles to growth and test your ability to overcome an issue. Well, I told you some of my experiences, and you can see that you know, there, are some, there are some good tests. And so they showed me where I was blocked. I had fear, a fear to attack. And what I learned from all that is anytime you are defensive, you're attracting attack. Okay, again, what you put out or what you, what's inside of you, you're attracting. Again, with responsibility with, with family and children, it, it's maybe more of a challenge to go to that level. Okay, because the responsibility, uh, the feeling of needing to defend a family uh, becomes greater the more dependence you have in that respect. I told you about the example of the gentleman who uh, had a sword in his hand and fired behind him and was approached by a very calm, loving person and didn't know what to do. Okay, that's uh, moving towards spirit. He was given an opportunity to let go of the sword and let go of the chaos and move into peace. And he, he didn't know what that meant in his life, that dream. And he asked me. I mean, I wouldn't have told him if he hadn't asked me. He says, what do you think this means? I said, well, there it is. And then he came back and said, yeah, I dropped the sword and went with the guy. And he said, it felt so good. I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> good. And you, then you pass the test. Visions, usually during meditation, um, you can have waking moments. Uh, or totally awake visions. They're more rare, but uh, you will get visions which are not necessarily dreams with lessons. Um, they may be something of the future, uh, premonitions or insight into something that's coming. Okay, so not all dreams and visions are strictly of lessons. Some of them are to show you what's coming. All right, continuous uh, evaluation of self and experiences to accelerate your growth. We've talked about this. Can you do it any better? Okay. There's no such thing as perfection, but why not try for the best you can? <laughs> okay, so self-evaluation. You get done breaking a control drama, and you go, gee, you know, it worked, but it, I think I can do it better. You know, I think I can do it more positive. You will have those, you will have those insights.